Greetings! Today I want to talk about neutral colors. This is a topic that fascinates me, how we can take two colors that at first glance wouldn't feel like they'd mix into a neutral, yet they do. To note right away, I consider neutral what ends up grey, warm to cool but grey. Browns, greens, blues, they are, for me, browns, greens and blues. Even if they end up dark and desaturated, if I can call them something else than grey, I don't consider them neutral. It's just a personal thing, I don't assume this to be right or wrong. Personally, I prefer neutrals as a dark color. I find that they have more depth to them and they feel less flat. If I had to have absolute black in a drawing, I'd try to make it part of the inked line work instead of the painted layer. While browsing the best resource online for paints and colors, handprint.com, I saw that there was a list of mixes for neutrals. I jetted down the mixes that I knew I had the paints so I could try it out. Also, while sketching and painting, I mixed up a couple of colors instinctively and ended up with some nice neutrals too. So I finally sat down and mixed 15 pairs of colors. I ended up with some cooler neutrals, some warmer neutrals, and some pretty neutral neutrals. To me, that's informative for when I want to set up a custom palette. I can use these mixes to incorporate the colors I want, all while making sure I have at least one easy to mix neutral. I wanted to share these because I believe that knowing ways to mix a neutral or a grey is a skill useful to all watercolor artists out there. I've prepared my chart on this field book wirebound sketchbook by Pentelic. It's 140 pounds watercolor paper made from cellulose, so made from trees. I've written the brands and the color names and the pigments already on the sheet, so I could easily use this page as a reference. So first color is Holbein's Rose Mather. It's PR83, so it's the same as Alizarin Crimson. It's one of my favorite colors by Holbein, if not my one favorite color by them. I'm mixing it with Albine's Bamboo Green, which is just a fancy way to say that it's PG36, which is the same color as Daniel Smith's Phthalo Green Yellow Shade. They mix pretty well, they make um, neutral, maybe hinting on the cold side of color, but it's a very nice mix. second mix starts with Cobalt Teal Blue by Daniel Smith, which is a green pigment PG50. I am mixing it with a color by Sennelier that they call Caput Mortum, which is a dark spin on the PR-101 pigment. It makes for a lighter grey, but what I really love of this mix is that as they dry, the colors they separate a little bit, so you have a hint of the teal, especially in, in the colors, so it's not a flat color, it has a bit of variegated look. For this third mix, I'm starting with uh, Daniel Smith's Van Dyke Brown. This mix is one I 
sort of made on my own. It didn't come with the idea from any reference. I was painting and I wanted to see if using a darker brown and a darker blue would also wield a neutral color. Also, Indentron Blue is my favorite blue, I think. These colors, they mix into a very dark neutral color. It's a bit on the cool side, but it, it's not as blue as the picture might suggest. It's a very dark gray. The fourth mix also uses Indentron Blue on one side, but it's going to be mixed with Raw Sienna. Raw Sienna and Van Dyke Brown use the same pigment, but they are very different. They are both PBR7 and Indentron Blue is PB60. Raw Sienna and In Then Thrown Blue mix into a really nice grey. This next mix is featuring two M gram colors Sap Green, which is made of two pigments, PG7 and PY110 and dioxazine purple, also by M. Graham, pigment PV23. This next mix also has PV23, but by Windsor and Newton this time. They called it Windsor Violet, but it's the same thing. And uh, the green in this case is also by Windsor and Newton. It is their Hooker's Green. It's also a mix of two pigments, green PG36 and the same yellow as the M. Gram Sap Green, PY110. It's also a very nice grey. Maybe it will show as bluish on your screen, but it's actually quite neutral and the one made previously with the M. Graham paints is a bit warmer, but that could just be my mix, which is not perfect. This seventh mix features a bright pink by Winsor Newton. It's their permanent rose, which is actually a violet pigment, PV19. And the green is Daniel Smith Phthalo Green Yellow Shade, pigment PG36, the same as is in Hooker's Green, just above it, and also the same as the bamboo green from Holbein from the first mix. So it's a very nice gray, this one too. I'm a little bit off screen here, but that's going to be fixed in a couple of seconds. This red is Pyrrol Red by Daniel Smith. It's pigment PR254. I'm going to mix it with another color by Daniel Smith, Viridian PG18. When mixing these colors, 
every time there is a red to mix, it's always a very powerful color I found, so in some cases I had to add a lot more of the green than the red. Say Paro Red, I just have to graze the paint and I've picked up pigment, while Viridian is much harder to work than Paro Red. So it was time to change my water and to bring back some clean water because after 8 swatches the water was actually quite murky and <laughs> grey. My palette is getting quite filled too so I'm gonna go and wash it out as well. So clean water and a very clean palette. So I'm, I'm just switching things around because I have to make room for the other column of swatches. The first mix has Ultramarine Blue by M. Graham, which is PB29. It's gonna be mixed with Quinacridone Burnt Orange by Daniel Smith, PO48. This next mix is also featuring French Ultramarine, well, an Ultramarine color, but this time it's French Ultramarine by Daniel Smith, also PB29. And I'm gonna mix it with Italian Burnt Sienna, PBR7. If you uh, make abstraction of the locales, <laughs> French and Italian, these two colors, they're usually the colors that are used to make a neutral in most palettes, mostly because a lot of starter sets, they come with these two colors. This color is Daniel Smith Phthalo Green Blue Shade. It's PG7. It's a fairly common pigment as well. And I'm mixing it with a color by Winsor and Newton, Perline Maroon, PR179. It's made for a very warm grey. Of course, perhaps my mix is really not as neutral as it could be, but it still gives me an idea of the color I can get by mixing these two. This new color is Perinone Orange by Daniel Smith. It's a very bright, very strong orange pigment, PO43. And I'm gonna mix it with a beautiful, beautiful color by M. Graham, their turquoise, which is a mix of phthalo blue and phthalo green, PB15, PG7. They mix into a very dark, warmer shade of grey, but it's it's very nice. Our 
Our next pairing also features Perinone Orange and it has the phthalo blue from the previous color. So it's Perinone Orange PO43 and phthalo blue green shade PB15, both by Daniel Smith. They make for another very nice dark, maybe a bit warmer grey, but still very very dark. Again we have phthalo blue green shade on this side, PB15, and it's gonna be mixed with transparent pyrrole orange, P071. This is a mix that I saw, especially Theo from the Parker Blog website. He has a YouTube channel too, but he uses this color mix a lot. And it's a very nice color mix. It's another one of those super dark, a bit warmer gray, but it's, it's very, very nice. And the very last mix I have on this chart, which is not the last way to mix neutral by the way, it's just the last mix I had the colors handy so I could mix it myself, but it's Daniel Smith Cerulean Blue Chromium PV36 mixed with another Daniel Smith Burnt Umber, which is PBR7. Some of the mixes are trickier to get right and some are actually pretty easy to mix. But yeah, so this one is a cooler, maybe a bit greener shade of grey. The chart is done. This is all the colors. We have a pretty nice range of neutral greys. If a color seems less neutral to you, it could just be the way my camera filmed, or the computer screen, or my mix also, because none of my mixes are probably perfect, but it's enough to give me a range of color. And if I wanted to build a palette and not have ultramarine or burnt sienna in it, because personally, they're not my favorite colors. Like I would much rather have the turquoise and the Perinone orange in my palette than Ultramarine or Burnt Sienna. Same for Indenthrone Blue, which I prefer over French Ultramarine, if I can. I'm gonna put a picture of this page on the Facebook page if you want to see it in more details and maybe have a better look at the colors. It's a fun experiment and a great way to use different colors. That's it for this video, thank you and have a nice day!